Now let's read some coils from the Modbus memory blocks using the Modbus TCP protocol. And so I'm using the same code from the previous video and the same connection as well. So go to my GitHub page and you'll find the library for the Modbus TCP. And you need to, to copy these macros, which hold the coil block sizes. So go to QBIDE and paste them. I've already pasted them over here. And now you need to paste the blocks that you'll be using. So basically I'm mimicking this kind of blocks because obviously um, it is an STM32, so you cannot directly store without declaring some buffers. So these are the buffers that I'm going to use and we'll be interested in the coil in mem in this video. Now you need to copy the functions used to transmit data and receive data from the memory. And so go to go to above the uh, while loop and you need to copy the functions handle modbus tcp modbus uh, pdu and all the other functions which are used to access the block memories with the block uh, the blocks so copy from recoil all the way to handle modbus uh, pdu like this and as well as the modbus event handler and go to qbide and make sure you paste them over here now I build the program and see if I'm getting errors. And I am not. Also, you'll need the Qmon Master software, basically, which is a, a Modbus TCP Master simulator, because we need this to access the STM32. Now let me show you the uh, function which reads the coils. So let me go to read coils over here. It basically takes as parameters the function code, the start byte, and the bit position, as well as the coil state, which basically holds the specific coil uh, state that you're interested in. Now, if the coil, uh, if the start byte is greater than the call out block size, it means that we went past the size itself, which sent the Modbus exception. And then this is how we basically read the data. We will shift the byte by X bit positions and we will end it with a one. So let me show you how exactly we will do this. If I go to Canva and basically I'm interested in um, this bit. If I shift it to the right by four bits, I will get this one, two, three, four, and then this is how I'll see if it's a one or a zero. I will end it with a one here, and as a result, I will get a one because it's ended with that one. So I'll go back to the code. So let me show you how basically the function is handling the specific function codes. So if the function code that we're interested in is the function code two, which reads the coil states. So I'll go to um, handle modbus video, and I'm searching for the function code to let me find it over here. So basically, let me show you the Modbus TCP packet. I've already made a video on how the Modbus TCP packet looks like. Go check it out. I'll leave the link in the description. Basically, we get the coil address by uh, performing an AND operation, an OR operation with the index 8 and index 9. As you can see over here, um, this is how we do it. So basically, we have here the in index 8 and index 9. and we get the address of the coil itself. Actually, it's a mistake over here. It should have been written um, first byte of coil, like the 15 coil, um, 28 coil, and um, so on. Now we get the coils count with this by uh, performing an OR operation by index 10 and index 11. And then this is how we calculate the bit position within the byte itself. If, let's say, I have here the, um, let me show you the memory itself. So you will understand it. This is how you calculate the start byte number for a specific coil number. So let's say I want to read the 28 coil state. So I'll basically calculate 20 divided by 8, which should be tw uh, 2. So I'll get the uh, byte index 2. And then this, uh, the, and then the way you calculate the bit position will be 20 modulus 8, and you'll get 4. So basically, it will be the second, the third byte actually, and the fourth bit. So if I go back to that function to explain you, um, which can be found here. So that's basically what you're doing here. You calculate the bit position and the byte number with the uh, formulas that I told you before. So if we uh, go past 2000, because that, uh, that's the maximum number of uh, red coils allowed on the Modbus TCP, we basically send an exception. And then if you're wondering what does this actually line of code do, so let me show you the packet structure. The response will look like this, and the eighth in index will be here. So basically, it tells how many bytes will con will contain the 
coil states. So I say over here coils count divided by 8, meaning the number of bytes, and plus the mod 8 because we don't know if we go past the, so if I want to read 20 coils, that will be 2 bytes, 16 bits, plus 4 bytes. So I will get 3, the as a length for the uh, 8 index. Now, let me show you how we basically read the coil states. Here we're performing a for loop as many times as coils count and the response itself will hold the coil states that we're interested in and the response bit index is basically the bit index that will go over and over the buffer that is used as a response. So as you can see over here it's set to zero and so we're continuously doing this and we're always incrementing the bit position and the response bit index for both the response buffer and the coil block. If they reach the number 8, meaning that we were the whole byte, we need to start over again from the next byte. That's why we set it to 0 and we increase the byte number. So we will start reading from the next byte, as you can see over here. And also, if the response bit index is 8, meaning that we added more than 8 bits to the buffer, we basically set it to 0 again and we increment the byte, meaning that we start to the we start from the next byte and so on. Now, uh, let me show you a demonstration. So I've opened Human Master and I'll flash it to the board. I'll open real term. Okay, it seems like I opened two bytes. So I will open it like this. I will clear it. Yep. And so the IP is set, the network is up. So I'll go to Cubone Master, I will set it as a TCP mode, and then I go to options, Madbus TCP, and I set the IP over here, 192, 192, 168, 137, 22, no, uh, 30, yeah, like this, oh, 30, then I will connect, it seems like I couldn't connect to it, hmm, what could be wrong, I think I should write here 30 like this, Oh, my bad. I have to set it as a TCP server. So if I go um, here, yep, I need to delete this and I need to say uh, ng listen, then the address of the manager, then the URI. Oh, my bad. What did I press here? So the URI, which will be 0 .0 .0 .0, and then port 502, then the modbus event handler and then the null as an additional parameter. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about embedded systems, I have a free school community over here. Um, it is dedicated to anyone with a passion for embedded systems. You can come here and ask your questions. I will also host, host some coding sessions here and I can't wait to see you in. So uh, I go back to the code and I will build, build it. Are we still getting an error? No. I will flash it again. I will we'll wait a little. Network is down. Again, network is down. Yeah, the network is set. Then I'll connect. It's connected. And now let me uh, read some bits from the input discrete. So I will go here and I'll open the hex to, business, uh, to, hex to binary converter like this. And let's say I want to read this byte. So I'll say over here f1 is equal to this value. But as I told you in the last videos, um, the byte order starts from right to left. But when I'm going to read the byte bits from Cubone Master, it will actually be shown in the other way around from left to right. So I will say here start address will be basically um, 9 because it's sent as. 9 minus 1 because the address starts from 1. So I'll say here 9. And then I'll say I want uh, 8 bytes, 8 bits. So I'll say right. And as you can see over here, it is sent actually the other way around 1, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, and so on. I hope you understood how Madbus TCP protocol works in conjunction with reading coils. And I'll see you later.